Welcome back. We've got this Woder under sink water filter that we're going to be installing. So I've got the cabinet opened up underneath here and we'll just need a few basic tools. Um, we're going to need to install this securing bracket for the filter and this has got a Phillips head screwdriver. So what I've got is a marker just to mark where we're going to do the pilot hole. I've got a drill to do the pilot hole and I've also got a Phillips head screwdriver. You could also use your drill with a Phillips head, but sometimes it's difficult to get underneath the sink. So I'm going to use the hand tool. And then also I've got some plumber's tape for securing the filter to the main line. And also I've got the crescent wrench for uh, loosening the water line and also uh, tightening down the water filter underneath the sink. So uh, we'll get a light set up underneath here and then we can get this installed. Okay, we've got this bracket. I'm just gonna mark off exactly where I wanna put it, drill a pilot hole and then screw it in place. I've got that marked off. All I'm going to do now is drill my pilot hole. Should be good. And then we're going to try to get this screwed in. Not sure if you can see this, but okay, that seems to be secure. So we can kind of move that so now we'll just get our filter in place, and you want to make sure that the flow is correct on this. Um, so when you get this in place, the water is gonna come in through here and out through the bottom. Um, and I don't think the orientation on the bracket really makes any difference, but I'm gonna allow it, uh, gravity to flow downward. So I'm gonna stick it in this way. Okay, that's exactly where I want that. And, um, we will now get the water line disconnected. Okay, it's still stuck under the sink here. Uh, I got a couple more items I'm gonna use. I got, a, I got a dish rag and I've also got this cup to help collect water. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn off the water line for both the cold and the hot. Um, this water filter is just gonna be connected up to the cold side, but I'm just gonna turn off the cold and the hot for good measure. So this is the main cutoff for the cold side. So I'm just gonna twist that clockwise until it's good and tight, and I'll do the hot water side as well. And so now I should be ready to disconnect the water line. So I'm just gonna kind of wrap the bottom of this cold water pipe with this rag to catch any water. And I'm gonna set this up here uh, just in case this water line here starts to leak water. So we'll see what happens there. Got the crescent wrench, let's loosen it up and pull it off. We've only got a couple of drops, so um, we're pretty safe there, but sometimes that water line can get some water in it. Um, so now what we're gonna wanna do is, we're gonna wanna connect up our water lines from the water filter, so this should be pretty easy. Um, I'm gonna wanna use some of my tape, if I can find it. Um, so this is some plumber's tape. I'm just gonna wrap this around the threads. This is gonna help with, I'm um, just making sure there aren't any extra leaks. So you can pull a little bit of this out. that off and you want to wrap this in the direction that um, in the direction that the end will be screwed on that way it doesn't wrap itself off so I just got some tape on there Take that off it should be good 
I'm also going to wrap some on this main line here too. Looks like we got some water coming out a little bit. clockwise fashion. Okay, so <clears throat> this is our input line. This is going to be connecting up with our input here. So we'll just screw this on. We can probably tuck this behind here. And then we'll just want to secure it with the wrench to make sure we got it good and tight. Also want to connect up this main line as well and so I probably want to thread this through here so we got a good connection and also tighten that one up snug on there. So everything is actually in place and we should be good to turn this on and test it out. Everything is all secured under here so I'm just going to tuck this water line a little bit back here to keep it out of the way and then I'm going to turn the water lines back on. So for the hot, counterclockwise again, get that turned on and for the cold as well. And you can hear it go through the filter there. And so if you follow me up to the sink, uh, what we want to do is we want to turn this on cold, and we're just going to want to run that for about three minutes because it's going to run up a little bit of the extra carbon that's in the filter out through here, so we want to get rid of some of those particles. So we'll run this for about three minutes, and then afterwards we will test out a glass. We've let the water run for three, four minutes now, so it should be primed. I've got a glass of water that I just poured from the bathroom, so this should be the water that we were getting prior to the filter and let's fill up a glass of the new water and do a side-by-side. -side. Bathroom water smells kind of like a swimming pool and the filtered water doesn't have much of an odor at all. Let's try the filtered water. Tastes like water. Wow, big difference after the filter. I think you get used to drinking uh, the regular tap water, but this tastes like chlorine, metals. It's almost got a more textured mouthfeel. Um, Yeah, the filter is making a big difference. So I am excited to drink water directly out of the faucet. So that was a pretty easy install and I would say a great investment. The Woder water filter, I think lasts for about three years or 10,000 gallons. Um, so, and it's under $100, I think it was only $70. So if your local water isn't fantastic, then I would say this is a good investment and it's an easy install, so go for it.